Greetings pet lovers, Bridget here with First Street Pets and today we're going to talk about how to scan for a microchip. You may have seen my recent video on which pet microchip scanner is the best. That one is very popular and I'm happy about that because it's a subject that most people don't know anything about. So if you want to learn more about the three frequencies of microchips and which scanner is best for you, go ahead and check out that video which I will link in the description. So now I'm going to show you how to use the chip scanner. We're going to start with step one, which may seem obvious, but it isn't so much because they're all different. Make sure the scanner is turned on. Now every scanner is different. Some will just turn on when you push the button. You'll hear a beep, you'll see something on the screen that indicates it is in scanning mode, and you can scan away. Others, like the Hero, which is the premium scanner that I have and use in my business, when I do microchipping and checking animals for chips, this one you actually have to turn on with a toggle switch. So you turn it on, you push the button, and then you're able to scan. So number one, make sure the scanner is turned on. Number two, make sure the batteries are charged. Now, many of the less expensive scanners that you may buy on Amazon are rechargeable with the USB cord like just about everything else these days. So if you don't use it all the time, or just like your phone, just plug it in at your desk or whatever, just to make sure that it's fully charged. Most of them will have a little picture of a battery with the lines so you can tell. You'll want to keep it as close to fully charged as possible. The reason I say that is because I have heard from people in rescue who do microchip clinics on a regular basis that they'll have multiple people doing microchips with multiple scanners They'll scan a dog with one scanner, it doesn't come up with a chip, they'll scan with another one and it does. So while there's a lot of variables, one of those variables could be that the batteries aren't critically low to the point where the scanner is alerting you that it's not gonna work, but the functionality could be reduced. So very important to make sure that those batteries are charged. Now, some of the industrial strength scanners like the Hero that I mentioned, they have regular batteries, they're not rechargeable, and that's why it has a switch to turn it off and on so you don't kill the batteries. So with those, just make sure you have fresh batteries. If you're using it all the time, you'll be aware of that. If it's been sitting for a while, maybe check the batteries or change them out just so they don't corrode or lose their power by themselves, and make sure that it is fu fully functioning before you use it. Number three, push the scan button in accordance with your scanner. Now I've noticed these are different. Many of them, when you push the button, you can take your thumb off of it and it'll continue scanning. You'll be able to tell because there's a message on the little screen that says scanning or there may be a little arrow moving or something to indicate that it is in scanning mode. Others, you have to actually hold the button down and when you let go, it stops scanning. So before you use it, be aware of how your particular scanner works, otherwise you won't get an accurate scan. So once you've done all that, this is how to scan on the body of the animal. Now the microchips are normally placed under that excess skin between the shoulder blades. So that's where you want to start. But of course, the chips can migrate. They may have been placed a little to the left or the right. So you wanna start in that place keep the scanner actually touching the body. Now some scanners do claim to... <laughs> Kitten Mac wants to uh, help me talk about scanning. He's chipped, so we can scan him later. Now you want to start at the place where the chip is supposed to be, kind of move down the shoulders where it might migrate, and then carefully move over the whole body. As I said, making sure you are touching the body. Now some scanners claim to be able to scan at a distance, but I'm not gonna rely on that. I'm not dealing with wildlife as some organizations are, or feral cats that cannot be handled, or dogs that are quite aggressive. We're dealing with pet animals, our own animals, animals that we know. So you want that scanner to be touching and moving slowly because there's a possibility you could miss it. Now, if you don't see the chip where it's supposed to be, it doesn't hurt to run over the whole body. That may seem ridiculous, but the chip could have been placed in the wrong place or it could have migrated. They're supposed to not do that anymore, but I do still find them sometimes quite a ways down the leg or way off to the left or right side. So be sure to cover the whole body. Now it's gonna be the same with a cat and with a dog, same procedure. 
Just be sure to go slowly and cover the whole body. I scanned a found dog the other day and initially didn't come up with anything, but I just kind of kept scanning slowly and then it popped up. So don't be in a hurry with this. It's not a, a, a magic wand. I mean, it is a piece of technology that does have to connect with the microchip in order to work. So take your time in order to get an accurate reading. If you have more than one scanner and this is a found animal, this is something important, then use the other scanner to check and make sure that that animal doesn't have a chip. So the next thing to keep in mind is how are you going to store the number once it comes up on the screen? Now, as I mentioned in my other videos, some scanners will actually save the number in the scanner. Others you can Bluetooth or connect with a USB cord to your computer or mobile device and save the number that way. I just do this the quick and dirty way because sometimes I'm outside or I'm at a barn or someplace scanning an animal that somebody found. I usually have my phone in my pocket. When the number comes up on the screen, I pull out my phone and take a picture of it. That way I have a record because sometimes the animal is scared and won't let you scan again. If it's a dog, they may snap at you. If it's a cat, they may be freaking out and wanting to get away. So. Once you get that number, you want to keep it. You don't want to have to keep scanning and restraining a frightened, lost animal. So once you have the number, now what do you do? If it's your own animal, you just want to make sure that it's registered correctly. If it's a stray animal, you want to be able to get in touch with the owner so they can come pick up him or her. So the next step is to enter that number into Pet Microchip Lookup. This is a universal microchip lookup put on by AHA, the American Association of Animal Hospitals. I always mess that up. American Animal Hospital Association. And thanks to them for creating this tool because there are more than 20 registries in the United States alone and it can be very confusing to track a microchip. So you wanna go ahead and enter the number in there. It will tell you if the chip is registered, if so, with which company, and when. So from there, if whether it's your pet or someone else's, you can contact the company by calling them or going to their website. If it's your own animal, you can make sure the information is current. If it's a stray animal, you can report that it has been found and that way the owner can contact you and be reunited quickly. I hope this is helpful. Be sure to check out my other videos and written articles about microchipping. Thank you for watching.